Here it is because when you're illustrating this concept that Christ is the door, no man comes unto the Father but by me, you have to clearly understand that this cross has a barrier in it. And if you're on this side of the border, you're living in death. But if you're on this side of the border, you're living in life. Now, this concept and picture of the door is not something that Christ just uses in John chapter 14. Look at Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. What does he say in Revelation 3 and 20? He says, I, Christ, stand at the door and I knock. And whoever opens the door, I will come in. And he will abide with me. Now the picture of these two verses very clearly is simply this. There is a lost and dying world that is dead in Christ because they're caught in sin on this side of the border of Calvary. And there is a very loving Savior who is standing on this side saying... Come here. Come here. If you're broken, open the door. If you're sick, open the door. If you're in need, open the door. If you're lost, open the door. If you need me, open the door. But Christ won't kick it in. You've got to open it. The good news is, is all you've got to do is just give them a little room. You don't have to open it like this. You just crack the seal. And he'll do the rest. But no matter how you look at it, the cross is a border. The cross is is a boundary. It is a legally defined point. You can't circumvent it. You can't get around it. In order to access the kingdom of heaven, you've got to go through the door of it. But once you go through the door, you need to realize that the door closes behind you. Why is that important? Because you can't live on both sides of the border. There's a lot of people who want to talk about Jesus on Sunday, but they don't want to live for Jesus Monday through Friday. They want to do what looks like church and feels like church and sounds like church and be in church on Sunday, but then they want to live like the rest of the world did Monday through Friday. And somewhere between Saturday night and Sunday morning, while they sleep, they cross the border. This is what the Bible verse that we read this morning says. God forbid that I should boast, save in the cross of Jesus Christ my Lord. That's the first half of the verse. And we are so thankful for His cross and His crucifixion. But read the second half of the verse. It says, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Two crucifixions discussed in the second half of the verse. The first half of the verse, we're talking about His crucifixion. The second half of the verse, we're talking about ours. By whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. It means when you come to the border of the cross and you open the door and you receive Christ, you're saying, Lord, your death is enough for me. Your gift is enough for me. Your salvation is enough for me. Now I am going to become a new creature in Christ Jesus and I'm going to close the door on my past and I am going to die to the world so that I can live with Christ. He said, well, that's so hard. No, it's not. You just have to make up your mind. That you're going to live for him instead of live for yourself. God Almighty looked down from heaven at a lost and dying world. 
And when he considered the quality of your life on the wrong side of the border, when he considered how much you would live in bondage to slavery and sin and addiction, when he saw the burdens that you were carrying, when he saw the yokes that you were wearing, he saw your future without eternity lost in the darkness of hell. It was so heavy on him that it broke his heart and he loved you so much that he gave you his very best and his very best was named Jesus Christ and his son came and died for you that if you would believe in him, you should should not perish, but have everlasting life. I believe that we've taken John 3.16 and made it so familiar that we take it for granted. It's like the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Liberty and justice for all. Play ball. <laughs> We've done the same thing with John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Thank you, Jesus. And you really need to take some time and weigh the gravity of what's being communicated there. Because we were so undeserving. For God. Not your grandma. Not some distant relative that has a trust fund set aside for you that if he doesn't give it to you, he's a bad uncle. For God. God who can create something out of nothing. God who could snap his fingers, make you disappear and start over tomorrow. He doesn't need us. He wants us. It's not like he's out of options. He can create new options in a second. He doesn't go to the store and get the materials he needs to create something. He creates things out of nothing because that's the kind of God that he is. And that God loved us all so very much that in order for him to reach us in our sin, he had to give the one who had never sinned a moment in his life. And the one who had never sinned a moment in his life knew how much God his father wanted us. That he willingly laid down his life. And in laying down his life, what he said is, I don't care where you've been. I don't care what you've done. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you've gone through. I don't care what's been done to you. Whosoever would believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Child of God, when you consider what has been given to us through Jesus Christ, it's enough to make you shout hallelujah for the cross, hallelujah for King Jesus, hallelujah for the Lamb of God, for sinners slain. No matter how far you've gone, He's still reaching out to you. No matter how broken you are, He can still meet you. No matter how many needs you have, He can still meet them all. No matter how far you are on the wrong side, He can reach out with hope and bring you to everlasting life. He looks into the world today. He says, I'll take the addict. He looks in this world today. He says, I'll take the shattered. He looks in this world today. He says, I'll take those who have been abused. I'll take those who have been offended. I'll take those who have been broken. 